See, I got 12 nines at GCSE. And this isn't because I spent two years revising or I memorized every textbook from cover to cover. I don't waste my time or yours. So stop what you're doing and watch this video if you want to know the method for how you can massively improve your grades in a very short period of time. If you aren't feeling ready for GCSEs, the most likely problem is to do with content. Either you're still making resources for it, you don't understand it, and you're still learning it. And so that's the first piece of the puzzle we'll solve. Although before all this, you do need to learn how to plan properly and use space repetition in your plans. We'll save that for another part of the video that you have to watch for this to work. In terms of content, it's getting really late in the GCSE timeline. And so making resources is definitely not the best use of your time right now. You definitely shouldn't be typing out really long flashcards online that take really long to make and not actually spending time learning it and absorbing the information or spending time making physical flashcards because that also is very time consuming or making those nice fancy notes that everyone likes to see. You can't be doing that. At this stage of GCSE, it's not worth it and you're probably sacrificing better grades for nice looking notes. And is that really what you want? And so instead, I would suggest, first of all, finding other people's decks that they've made good ones on Quizlet or Anki shared deck list or any other resources that you use. And then before memorizing them, this is a very important step, going to the specification and making sure that every single bullet point of the specification is covered in your flashcards to ensure you're memorizing, first of all, the right thing. And you know everything that's going to be tested in your exam. You can do this by watching YouTube videos for the relevant specification that you do or using your teacher's slides or a relevant revision guide or textbook. But ensure when using revision guides that it's actually covering every bit of information you need. Sometimes they're a bit bare bones and don't have enough information. But if you check that, then it should be good. An extremely OP trick for this that not a lot of students use, especially at GCSE, is the image occlusion feature on Anki. Here's the add-on if you have Anki already and you're not using it. And for those of people who don't know, this is where you use boxes to cover pieces of information that you want to memorize. It's a way of making flashcards and memorizing information very quickly. And I use this a lot at GCSE to get 12 nines, especially when it gets to those later stages of GCSE and you haven't quite fully learned all the content for paper two. Quickly covering information from YouTube videos and teacher slides and notes is a really effective and quick way of memorizing information so you can get into the more important parts of the revision process. And if you're feeling even more confident on Anki, Another thing you can do is start to change the interval settings to make sure that you're completing more reviews before your exam. Because Anki is built for long term revision, but we're dealing on a short term timeline here, you might feel like changing these intervals will suit you better and make sure you're actually remembering the information. But now that you've got your actual content and your resources, how are you actually going to learn them? You need a magical method that's going to get information into your brain and actually stay there. That's active recall. And you need to make sure you're doing this to ensure you're getting good grades. And the simplest and most effective way to make sure you're using Active Recall, aside from Anki flashcards, is blurting. Now, for those of you who don't know, blurting is a revision method where you get a blank piece of paper, recall all the information you can from a certain topic, every definition, every concept, every explanation. And then once you're done with that, you then get your textbook, teacher slide, YouTube video, and fill all the information you couldn't remember. Once you do this, learn everything again, repeatedly do this, do it again and again and again until you're able to recall everything from a topic without having to fill any mistakes or any unknown information. Once you're doing this consistently, you know you've mastered the topic and you're ready to move on to the next. It's a really simple but powerful revision method. But one thing is that make sure you're not cheating because at this stage of GCSEs, you're only cheating yourself out of better grades. And I don't think that's what you're trying to do here. Now we've got the resources in check, you need to plan your revision. You need to ensure you have clarity in your goals and your planning when revising. You need to know exactly when you're doing a certain task so you can ensure you're going to finish before exams. By doing this, make a revision timetable for the time you have left, but make sure you're including spaced repetition. This is a revision technique based on the science of the forgetting curve. And by doing this, it will ensure you're still able to recall information you learned two weeks ago one day before the exam so you don't get a big scare when you don't remember anything before your test. The simplest way I can suggest for you to do this at GCSE would be if you learn a topic on one day, put in your plan to review it the next day, then depending on that, maybe two or three days after, then four or five days after, and keep increasing that all the way to your exam. That's a simple model of the forgetting curve that you can easily incorporate into your revision plans to ensure your plan is effective, 
and following space repetition. However, none of these tips are going to matter without this next part of your revision. And that is practice questions and past papers. You need to complete as many practice questions as you physically and mentally can, making sure you're absorbing everything from the paper, the different question types, the command words, the question styles, where they are in the paper and the different marks and mark scheme answers. You want to make the examiner's job as easy as possible because they are marking thousands of papers and they're not in the market of doing you any favours. So ensure that your paper is very easy to mark so you're able to get the marks that you know you deserve. Another important and helpful thing about past papers is that they let you know your current grade, what you're currently working at and how much work you need to continually put in to ensure you're getting your target grade by the end of the summer because you don't want to be unpleasantly surprised in the summer when you get grades far lower than you expected. However, past papers will not work without following these three very important steps. Your past papers have to be in timed conditions, they have to be marked harshly, and you have to ensure you're improving from these past papers. There's no point completing a past paper if you're going to complete it, maybe not even mark it properly, and throw it away and move on to another one. You might as well have not done it, you might as well have procrastinated and done nothing. And I think this is what separates the fives from the sevens and the sevens from the nines. You need to make either a flashcard or a note for every single mistake that you make. This is to ensure that you don't make the same mistakes twice and avoid falling into traps. Because once you do this for a long time, you'll realise that these exams only have so many sort of problem solving questions and tricky things that can, they can add in before they start repeating. Once you have it all memorised in here, you'll find that answering those tricky questions on past papers and your real paper will be very easy. So make sure to do this to achieve those top grades. If you want to make your revision in these next two weeks as effective as possible, an integral part of this would be making use of high yield topics. High yield topics are just those topics that are going to always come up in every single exam. You can either ask your teacher for this, I'm sure they'll know because they'll have years of experience, or even if they don't, watching YouTube videos or analysing past papers yourself to find out exactly what topics come up over and over again and what you need to become a master of to ensure you're gaining some easy marks in the exam. These topics are really useful in specialising your revision to focus on topics you know you're going to gain marks on in the exam and also ensuring some guaranteed marks in papers because you would have known these topics at the back of your hand because you knew they were always going to come up. And also remember, with only two weeks left, the sooner you start revising effectively, the better. And statistically, someone has to fail, so don't let that be you. Comment exams if you want to see another video in the next three weeks or so about how to revise in between exams, especially in that half term between exams. Thank you for watching. Bye.